Hi everyone and welcome to the Rochester Press Box, episode number 500. Who'd have thought? Not look me. at this. Not me. And look at this. Wow, wow. this is new. Wow. Celebrating with new coasters. 500 Ooh. episodes. Three dollars worth of coasters. I tell you, a special occasion. Oh. Joe brought spares. Oh, that's no why. It's, <laughs> is it missing another number? <laughs> Well, it's as close as we could get. I got you. I got you. And so we're going to periodically throughout this uh, the show, we're going to hear some, some of the many, many actually people that we've had as guest panelists uh, on the show throughout, which is almost 10 years. Back 10 years. Wow. It's, it's like unbelievable. <laughs> but these are the guys that are carrying the ball these days. Tariq Spence, how are you doing, man? Uh, feeling good. Summer has been treating me nice. Nice weather. So I'm enjoying it. Hopefully everybody's enjoying it too. Good. And... Pat Duffy. Great to see you. What are you wearing? What are you talking about? This is from the uh, brand, I, know, I wore the Space Jam jersey a couple weeks ago, from the Space Jam 2 New Legacy, the Goon Squad jersey, which is actually a perfect description of everyone that's ever been on this show. <laughs> right. <laughs> In celebration of the 500th. Absolutely. Uh, Let's talk college football, shall we? Mm -hmm. The reorganization of the conferences, I find myself kind of excited without really knowing where this is headed. Where do you think it's going? I, not only am I excited, I'll add on to that. I am nervous of this whole thing exploding again and everything shuffling around, the decks that are moving. Exploding so, in a good way? Yes, yes, because I like chaos. I think everybody does too. I think that's why everybody's sort of <laughs> pushing forward another sort of tournament for college football. I know the traditionalists want, we want our bowls. Nobody watches those bowls. So what if those bowls were sort of like, I don't know, maybe a quarterfinal two or semifinal two, the ultimate game, which I know they've done with these sort of four games. But I will say this, there is no place to be comfortable. Notre Dame doesn't know what to do. I would have stayed independent if I were them, but now they get to be a part of a network. So if they have a down year, they get to work that out. This is all about money and networks, how much you can spread around. I'm excited because I don't know what's going to happen. And there is no way to know if the SEC or the ACC or the Big Ten is going to be able to shock one of these big teams in the future. So I love it. See it. I'm loving every second of this. First <laughs> of all, just make them two big conferences. Like, what's the point of not doing that? Break them off into divisions inside the conferences and let them play that way. But my favorite thing about this is the simultaneous hypocrisy of everybody involved because you have these college football coaches and chancellors and athletic directors saying you know we need to keep the sanctity of the game together and these are amateur kids and you know Dabo Sweeney who I love kicking around mm -hmm. right when if these kids get paid I'm out of here those same men and women while saying this is an amateur sport are elbowing and fighting and clawing to get into new conferences destroying the tradition that they're trying to uphold the amateur shot up oh, it's about money it's been about money and you got no power Pants on now. The emperor has no clothes. So how do you argue the other way? I will add on the fact that I remember this was all about team spirit and education yep, yep, yep. and all the great things about college, which it still is. I kind of like it because I like the college kids going crazy on a Saturday, watching their games, you know, whatever they may do because they're young and they're having fun. And that brings the energy to college football. But this is a business. My favorite thing about this were the statements that USC and UCLA put out when they joined the Big Ten or 15 or 82 or whatever it's going to be, right? where they had to talk about, well, you know, the high academic tradition. You're going to be sending kids across the country to play games. Not They're... just football games. The thing is, you're going to send them across the country to play volleyball. Yes, there's going to be field <laughs> hockey that is going to cross the country. That ain't making you money, and you're going to be sparing expense to take care of those kids. Do not ever tell me again that a kid on an athletic scholarship is there for education because you are lying. Because they, there'll be a lot of people saying, well, what about education? What yeah. about this? What about that? Yeah, but he said you can't anymore. And if Duffy says no. it, you can't do it anymore. When am I ever wrong about anything? <laughs> Every <laughs> single thing I say, you guys come back, you're right. There's only, 400 and, sound like. <laughs> there's only 499 <laughs> episodes to prove it. <laughs> we are in episode 500 of the Rochester Press Box talking Buffalo Bills next. Hey, Bill, congratulations on 500 shows. I remember when I helped you get this whole thing started. It was a blast doing it then. I enjoyed it. And I've enjoyed watching the show and what you guys do, what Joe and his staff have done in order to make it look great week in and week out. And that's not easy to do. And Tariq has done a wonderful job. You two together, understanding sports, having great opinions. I think it's fantastic and you deserve a ton of credit for how things have gone. It's not easy to do 500 shows and to keep it going and to keep it going strong. And oh, and um, the other guy, uh, Pete Dunphy, the guy with the beard. Yeah, he, he talks a lot too. So congratulations on 500. Let's go for 500 more.
Welcome back to the Rochester Press Box. We're at episode 500. Celebrating today, our Buffalo Bill segment brought to you by Ralph Honda for three generations and celebrating 50 years as New York's first and oldest Honda dealer. Visit Ralph Honda today and find out how we do Honda right at ralphhonda.com. I'm running, frankly, running short on Buffalo Bill's topics. So I thought we'd look at the schedule today and figure out what the games we least want to see are. And so it's funny. I go through the schedule, right? It is <laughs> unbelievable. The A-list games. I mean, the Bills are on prime time. I mean, seven times, really, if you count Thanksgiving this season, right? There are two games that stand out to me where I'm yawning. One is the Minnesota game because Kirk Cousins is the most boring quarterback in the history of quarterbacks. Don't care. Maybe you get a little pop from... Stephon Diggs playing his old team. But then again, that the trade worked out so well for both teams. I don't think there's any animosity there. I think Buffalo going to Chicago will also be a boring yeah. game. I mean, I'm not really... Although you do have the local connection of Ryan Poles, now the general manager, Canandaigua kid, uh, the uh, general manager of Chicago. So that's kind of cool. But other than those two games... I'm all well, that f- one. That one is the one that I, I I had to pick because on Christmas Eve, my God, you spend Christmas Eve in Chicago to watch the Bills play the Bears. Don't. I'm going to th- my me and my whole family are going to Detroit for Thanksgiving for that game. I think that's cool though. It is There's cool. So much tradition. Thank Despite you. the fact it's alive, there's so much tradition with that game. I would go to that thing in a minute. Well, what, what concerns me about the Chicago game is where Chicago will be at the end of the year and where the Bills will be at the end of the year. Will they need that game? Will Chicago now realize that they have to totally destroy everything they have to? So that's going to be a little bit concerning and do you take your foot off the gas at that end of the season when you've played about how many games 14 15 games Mm -hmm. it's 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 one of those questions about teams going into the playoffs i know the colts ran into this a couple years ago we had take a foot off the gas and of course they went into the playoffs and got eliminated really early so that's the only concern i would just be worried about week one two and three I would just be, don't even look past anything Four, else. five, six, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's no, right. Week He's one, right. two, and three. And the what reason they why, always say the most important game is the game you're playing right now? Well, it I seems know, to happen every week. I know the Rams are the, well, you've got to worry about week one. I've been worried about Tennessee because I never, I don't, Tennessee's one of those teams that's kind of like, you got to get over the hump with them. And then the Dolphins, after two weeks in the NFL, you'll find out, are where, you, where will the is Dolphins Is that be? a real thing you just said yes, in the world? Is. Yes, it the is. The Dolphins. Right now, in said, the month of July, okay, yes, it is. You said. Rams, great Super Bowl champions. You're on the road, primetime Thursday Tennessee. night. Understandable. Tennessee coming to Buffalo finally. But yes, all right, Tennessee, you've had a hard time the last three seasons. You threw the Miami Dolphins? Yep. Tariq Hill. Sure. Tua. Yes. You're out of your... You, how are you on a sports show, the Miami Dolphins? Absolutely, because they have so much excitement, and I can't wait to see this matchup of speed. If they're healthy and you're healthy, it'll be fun. It's not. There's nothing to watch. I Josh know. Allen owns that team. He's a Charles Clay drop pass away from never having lost to the Dolphins Save ever, the ever, ever, Save the team. ever. Save the team. You're going to embarrass yourself. I again. know they're going to win the game. I just said it's a game you want to watch. No, you don't. I should do. Well, I mean, I want to watch it because I hate the Dolphins, I am not worried in any way You're going to watch it regardless. Of course I'm going to watch it because I watch football. And you know what? With your takes lately, sometimes I question whether or not you Oh my goodness, can you believe this? How could you do this? 500 episodes, the loudest, most controversial thing we have is like, who cares about the Miami Dolphins? I don't... It doesn't matter. It's the Dolphins. It's the Dolphins. Hey, Kyle Guerra here. Uh... Congratulations, 500 episodes. That is an incredible milestone. Um, I just want to say congrats to everybody that's involved with the show currently, everybody that was involved with it in the past. Uh, I want to thank Joe Brat, your director, um, for giving me an opportunity, my first start in the career. Um, Bill Pucko, legend, Rochester legend. Um, always got really awesome stories. I learned a lot from him. Uh, Tariq Spence, incredible guy voice of Silk, and uh, Duffy. Anyway, guys, uh, congratulations. Hey, everybody. This is Bob Lyer from Atlantic City at a basketball tournament. I just want to congratulate the Press Box on their 500th episode. I've had a great time knowing everybody, meeting everyone. Kudos to DeTulio and Tariq, and, and of course, my boy, Pupko, and my man, Pat Duffy. So guys, congrats. Hi, Rochester Press Box. Kim and Arnie here. Just wanted to say congratulations on 500 episodes. That's amazing. Thanks for having me along the way. And here's to 500 more. Cheers. Hey guys, 
Congrats on the 500th episode of the Press Box. Always fun going on there. Great talking baseball with Bill, talking about the NBA with Tariq. And, you know, with Duffy, just trying to keep him honest and figure out what the heck jersey he was wearing that week. Congrats. It's a great show. A Rochester institution. Very, very fortunate to have been a small part of it. Continued success to 500 more. Cheers. Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Hey, your getaway guy with a family getaway that's nearby and it's cheap and what a ride. Mike O'Brien, your getaway guy, it's on my latest podcast and then some at thegetawayguy.com. Here's the Press Box Trivia Answer brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Are you facing criminal charges from a DWI and feel that you never imagined it could happen to you? Contact attorneys with years of experience as prosecutors and defenders. Contact Kanguli Brothers Law today for a free consultation. You can put your trust in us. Welcome back to the 500th episode of the Rochester Press Box. Like it or not, brought to you by Kanguli Brothers Law. Attorneys with years of experience defending the accused. Don't go unprepared. Contact Kanguli Law today. Uh, go to you, Tariq. Like it or not, the situation Kevin Durant finds himself in. Uh, like it because it creates Jama off the field or off the court, I should say. Uh, also like it because we're going to find out what Kevin Durant's really all about here. His leadership has been questioned a few times in OKC and in Golden State, even though he won two championships, and now in Brooklyn. So if he leaves Brooklyn again, I'd like to know where he lands and who is going to be in charge of that organization. Is it Kevin Durant with his two rings, which he piggybacked off with Golden State? Or is it going to be whoever the organization is that's running? I don't know, the GM, the head coach, all the other different things that are a part of making a team a team. I mean, I I find it weird how he's become, like, the hero in this story, right? Because, like, there are people all of a sudden talking heads going, good for him, standing up to Kyrie and saying he doesn't want to tie his legacy. Bro, your legacy shot already, right? Because you were the one that allowed Tariq, he was, or excuse me, Tariq, Kyrie... That's how oh, upset Kyrie. I am. That's how upset. You'll never be Kyrie. <laughs> there you go. Who you allowed <laughs> Kyrie to say and do the things that he did? He stood up for him publicly. And it's funny when you want to talk about legacy. I love comparing just legacy-wise, old school and new school. Kevin Durant could have been up there with LeBron and Jordan and Oscar Robertson and Bill Russell and guys like that. Maybe not close, but in that conversation, he's Wilt now. Right? He's Wilt. He's going to play on multiple teams. The drama off the court is going to be in every discussion. Because every discussion... Dude, it wasn't Wilt. Wilt's choice. The difference is that like, he's, he's creating his own legacy here. Yes. I guess what I'm saying is whenever you talk about Wilt Chamberlain, you say talent, 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 talent. But when he... Right? And with Kevin yeah. Durant for the rest of his life, for the rest of it, no matter where he ends up, it's going to be talent, unbelievable, generational. But when he... Hall of Famer, of course. Great player will be probably one of the top three players in the NBA right now, if not one of the best, if not the best. But the issue will be his legacy of leadership. What do you think his end game is? Should he have stayed in OKC? Yes, absolutely. I loved him. And look, I'm talking personally now. Nobody stays with one franchise forever. But think about the, that roster they had, right? You had, Dur- you had Durant. You had Westbrook. You had Harden coming off the bench. You had All Sir- on the rise. And Serge Ibaka coming off. All of those guys... You're right, on the way up. Now, you wouldn't have been able to pay all of them, but for that to have come together for another three years, oh my God. But they needed leadership. He's not that guy. Yeah. Hey, it's Jeff DeVeronica, formerly of the Democrat and Chronicle and the 19-year host of the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. Want to congratulate Joe Brat on the press box for episode number 500. You don't make it this far along to the great 500 unless you got something special. Thanks for uh, having me on the show once in a while as a uh, panelist. And uh, good luck on the next 500, Joe. I dropped everything and I did the video. Kitty litter and all. Hey everyone, Rob Schultz here. I worked on the press box for years and man, what a time it has been. We got great things ahead though with the Bills looking awesome this year. Western New York sports, awesome. Bill, congratulations. Press box 500. Sounds like a NASCAR race, but it's 500 episodes. Go get them, Bill.
The Press Box Stat of the Week is being brought to you by McArdle's Restaurant in Fairport. McArdle's is open seven days a week with dining available indoors and out, takeout and delivery. Come home to McArdle's. Unfinished Business is brought to you by Greg the Roofer. Greg will meet or beat any competitor's price and can finance you with zero down. Call today or visit gregtheroofer.com. Better roof, better price, better call Greg today. The Press Box episode number 500. Congratulations. You know, I remember episode number one of the Press Box, which is to say, how come no one told me we were wearing suits? I'm out of here. Just kidding. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rochester Press Box here from McGregor's. I'm Bill Pucknell. This is our panel for this week's show. First, Brian Mazeroski from the High School Sports Beat joins us. John DeTulio, Sports Director, WHTK Radio. And Mike Catalana, 13 Wham TV Sports Director. Uh, it's football season. Congratulations, a great run. How about some sports takes for you? USA will beat England Black Friday in the World Cup. Can't wait. The Sabres will be fun to watch still. And how about this? Cook will outsell Stefan Diggs and Devin Singletary in Bills jerseys by the end of this season. I'm a little rusty on sports takes, so you have to bear with me. Anyways, congratulations. Great to talk with you again. And here's the 500 more. Welcome to the 500th episode of the Rochester Press Box. It's time for Unfinished Business. Let's do it again. Pat. We were talking about college football earlier in the show and how everyone's scrambling to get into a super conference. And Notre Dame was brought up. And the discussion about Notre Dame the last two weeks is where are they going to go? Here's my question. Why do they have to go anywhere? When you talk about premium, high-end, legacy college football sports programs, you can talk about Alabama, you can talk about Ohio State, you can talk about Michigan. None of them hold a candle to Notre Dame. None of them have their own television deal individually for one sport with a major network. Notre Dame does with NBC. Anytime Notre Dame comes to town, no matter what sport they're playing, you're going to see green and blue in that stand. Go to a basketball game when Syracuse basketball is hosting Notre Dame, at least when they used to in the, the old Big East. Look, man, Notre Dame doesn't need conferences. Maybe they feel like they have to align with someone because that's the way the winds are blowing. Maybe they're afraid if they don't jump in, they're going to be the last one without a chair with this musical chairs game. I got a tip for you. You won't be. They want you. They need you. You don't need them. If there is chaos, I want one thing amongst all of this. Two major super conferences and Notre Dame standing off to the side waving going, hey, you got to include us every year. Mike Greer is the new manager, general manager, I should say, for the San Jose Sharks in the NHL. So now, next to the Rangers and the Sabres, I'm rooting for San Jose. Not because he's the first black general manager, but I actually got a chance to meet him when he came to Rochester for a game through friends. And let me just tell you this. Nice guy, took photos, family moment, but it was a long time ago. As a matter of fact, my 18-year-old was going to college, was literally probably around the age of eight when she met him. So all these great things are coming together. I just see in this timeline a guy who's worked so hard, scheduled his entire NHL career now getting to the front office fighting to be the first black general manager in the NHL. It's a long time overdue and Mike Greer deserves it and now he's got a new fan for San Jose. One of the two longest continually running sports events in the United States, generally speaking, and if you disqualify such regional things like the National Chimneys Jousting Competition in Maryland and the Harvard versus Yale crew races, which claim to go back into the early to mid 1800s, it's a Kentucky Derby. The first run for the Roses was raced in 1875, followed just 20 months later by the Westminster Dog Show. And when you have the chance, you should watch a dog agility competition. <laughs> Participants are run through an obstacle course and it's riotously entertaining. Classifications are by height, starting under 12 inches and up through over 23 inches tall. So the Bumbles don't have to compete with the beasts. The thing is, we're always looking for the next big thing. I think I've found it. That is Unfinished Business, and that is our 500th episode of the Rochester Press Box. Gentlemen, thank you, and carry us in to the next 500. So happy I got him so angry in the 500th episode. I feel so accomplished. Here's my goal. Make the 500 first episode the first good one. <laughs> All For right. me personally, you're nailing. That's you're admirable. nailing it. You're doing great. Dog agility. We have, that was good. No, that was really we good. have to pick it up. Yeah, 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 hey, yeah, thank you for joining us. And again, we'll start with our second set of 500 episodes next week, and we'll see you then.